Many people have hobbies, pastimes that they enjoy and maybe even spend a lot of money on. However, there are some people whose hobbies become an obsession. This is particularly true in the world of bird watching. Some birders have spent their entire lives trying to view and count as many species of birds as possible, and an exceptional few have tried to do it all in a single year. Learn more about the big year and how bird watching became competitive on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. Wait, are you gaming on a Chromebook? Yeah, it's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard. And I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah, I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Go ahead, break it down real Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine, a new kind of Chromebook. This episode is sponsored by ButcherBox. If you've been listening to this podcast long enough, you know that I'm a big fan of ButcherBox. When my ButcherBox shipment arrives, I feel like a little kid on Christmas morning. When my most recent shipment arrived just a few days ago, I was able to track the package and pick it up as soon as it was delivered. Everything was completely frozen thanks to ButcherBox's innovative shipping system, which ships their meat with dry ice. I moved the meat from the box to my freezer without so much as a hint of thaw. Now I'm good for another month of high-quality steaks and ground beef. Later today, I'm going to be having one of the grass-fed New York strip steaks that was part of my most recent order. If you're looking for high-quality grass-fed beef, pasture-raised chickens, heritage-breed cage-free pork, and wild-caught seafood, you have to check out ButcherBox. ButcherBox is giving us a special deal. Sign up today at butcherbox.com daily and use code daily to get $20 off your first order. That's butcherbox.com slash daily and use code daily to claim this offer. I should start out this episode by noting that I am not a birder. However, in the course of my travels, I've had the pleasure of meeting several very serious birders. One man I met was a student in Singapore who would travel to northern Malaysia after his classes were done on Friday just so he could spend a few hours trying to see a rare bird before returning to his classes on Monday. I met several groups of birders during my trips to the Galapagos Islands. They would obsessively document everything they saw every night on board the ship. They would get excited at seeing even the smallest, simplest finches, which no one else ever even bothered to pay attention to. I'm not trying to imply that all birders are obsessive. The vast majority of them are not. However, as with anything else, from collecting baseball cards to building model train sets, some people can take things to an extreme. Before I get into the meat of this episode, I should explain a little bit about how birdwatching came to be. While the origins of birdwatching began in the 20th century, it really sprang out of the 19th century trend for collecting. Many upper-class people, especially in Britain, would tend to collect birds' eggs and stuffed birds from around the world. They didn't necessarily visit these places or collect them themselves, but rather people would ship specimens to them. In the 20th century, optics improved, and devices such as binoculars became more popular and more affordable. Instead of shooting birds and mounting them, it was now possible to observe them from a distance. Automobiles actually increased birdwatching, as people could now easily travel to other places to see birds that they couldn't at home. Groups sprang up around birds and birdwatching, such as the Audubon Society, the American Ornithologist Union, and the British Trust for Ornithology. Guides about birds were published, and lists were created of what birds could be found in what area. Perhaps the most revolutionary book for the purpose of this episode was a 1934 book published by Roger Torrey Peterson titled A Field Guide to the Birds. Once you had lists, it wasn't too long after when people began trying to check things off their list. One thing that many bird watchers will do is keep a lifetime list. This is simply a list of every species of bird that they have ever observed in their life. How many bird species you can observe depends on a host of factors, the biggest of which is simply where you live. If you live in a country such as Colombia, you would have more species of birds around you than in any other country in the world. If you live in the Canadian Arctic, not so much. The total number of bird species in the entire world is somewhere between 10,906, which is the number given by the Clements Checklist of Birds of the World, and 11,001, which is the number given by the International Ornithologist Union. 
The record for the most birds ever observed by one human is held by a former American diplomat by the name of Peter Kastner. Depending on the list, he has observed over 9,800 species of birds in the wild. And there have been 22 people who have observed over 9,000 species in the wild. Just as an aside, in the process of researching this episode, I've wondered exactly how many species of birds I've seen without even knowing it. I've been to the Galapagos, on safaris, and in national parks all over the world. And I'm guessing my lifetime list would probably be around 2,000, having not even tried counting. Most of the serious birders I've met will be able to tell you the number on their life list. However, having a lot of birds on your life list is mostly a function of how much and how long you're able to travel, and not everyone can do that. Many of the first birding accomplishments were local in nature. The man who started the competition, which is the focus of this episode, was a traveling businessman by the name of Guy Emerson. In 1939, during the course of traveling for business, he managed to observe 497 species of birds in North America. The single calendar year record for the number of bird species observed in North America is what later became known as the Big Year. Emerson's Big Year record was broken by Bob Smart in 1952, who observed 515 bird species. The very next year, British author James Fisher and the aforementioned field guide writer Roger Troy Peterson made a huge 30,000-mile trip around North America, writing a book and filming a documentary. They claimed that they had observed 572 species. Then, in 1956, English ornithologist Stuart Keith followed the same route that Peterson and Fisher did and saw 594 species of birds. In 1969, the North American Big Year rules were formalized by the American Birding Association. Their rules held that you could observe birds in any of the 49 continental United States, excluding Hawaii, all of Canada, and the French islands of St. Pierre and Miquelon. You could also observe birds at sea within 200 miles of shore. Here I should also note that the Big Year competition, and in fact all birding statistics and accomplishments, are all done on the honor system. You don't have to photograph every bird. You just need to document that you saw it or that you identified it from its song. So, in that respect, it's kind of like the Completionist Club. In 1971, an 18-year-old high school student named Ted Parker spent his last semester in high school going up and down the east coast of the United States searching for birds. And then he went to the University of Arizona in the fall, where he did more birding. He wound up with 626 species for the year. At this point, with official rules being established, big year records became something that was actually pursued for the sake of setting the record. In 1973, Ken Kaufman and Floyd Murdoch both pursued Ted Parker's record and demolished it. Kaufman ended up with 666 birds, and Kaufman got 669. In 1979, that record was broken by James Vardaman, who observed 699 species. And just to give you an idea of how much things had changed, Vardaman traveled 161,000 miles in his big year compared to the 30,000 miles traveled by James Fisher and Roger Troy Peterson in 1953. In 1983, Benton Basham reached 710 species, and in 1987, two birders competed for the record. Steve Perry ended up with 711, and Sandy Comito reached 722. 722 bird species in a single year was the record for over a decade until 1998. That year, three different birders made a serious attempt at the record. This was the year that the concept of a big year was brought to the attention of the public. The current record holder, Sandy Comito, along with Al Levitan and Greg Miller, all chased the record of 722 species. Sandy Comito ended up holding on to his record with 745 species, which was later updated to 748. The 1998 competition was turned into a book titled The Big Year, which was later turned into a movie starring Steve Martin, Jack Black, and Owen Wilson. Here I need to explain something else. A North American Big Year isn't just running around seeing all the birds you can, although that's a big part of it. The American Birding Association has a list of North American birds that a big year is based on. This list is changed every year as subspecies are defined as new species and other species that might only migrate through North America are included. Sandy Comito saw four birds in 1998 that were not on the ABA list. He submitted all four to the State Birding Association's Rare Bird Committees. Three were then approved and sent to the National Association, which were then added to the list. The other thing is that North America, even if you just include the United States and Canada, is really big. 
Near Newfoundland and Baffin Island, it's possible that you may get occasional birds that wander over from Europe. The Aleutian Islands, especially Attu Island, the most distant of the archipelago, is only about 700 miles from the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. Asian birds can easily get blown off course and wind up there. Birds that are not on the ABA master list. For example, one of the four birds not on the list that Sandy Camito saw was the yellow-throated bunting on Attu Island. The yellow-throated bunting is native to Japan, China, and Russia. The other thing is that birds are not evenly distributed. A big year will begin on January 1st of any given year. It would not be uncommon for a serious birder to observe over 100 species in just the first few days. Easily over 90% of the birds a birder might see in a big year might be observed in just the first few months. The rest of the year is in the pursuit of a few rare birds. Comito's 1998 record stood for well over a decade despite several attempts to break it. It was a testament to the difficulty of the achievement and to the integrity of the birders. To spend an entire year and come up just a few birds short on something that was entirely on the honor system really says something. The record was finally broken in 2013 by Neil Hayward. He viewed 747 species on the list, plus another three more provisional species, two of which were approved, giving him 749, beating the record by one. In 2016, the record was broken in July of the year by John Weigel, an American living in Australia who had previously set the Australian big year record. He ended the year with 784 species identified. The ABA then made a huge change in the big year rules in 2016, adding Hawaii to their list. This was an enormous expansion of the North American list as the birds found in Hawaii are largely those not found in mainland North America. And this resulted in a distinction between an ABA area big year and an ABA continental big year. Dave Weigel currently holds both the continental record, which he set in 2016, and the ABA area record, which includes Hawaii, of 840 species, which he set in 2019. Every year now, multiple people are attempting their own big years. Many people now put certain restrictions on how they do their big year. Some have attempted it without flying, and some have done it only on bicycles, and others try to do it photographing every species that they see. Moreover, the idea of a big year has spread to other countries. There is a world big year record now. In 2016, Dutch birder Ariane Dwarshaus saw 6,852 birds in a single calendar year. And this is a remarkable achievement, considering it's a full two-thirds of the lifetime list record. Birders in many countries have started doing their own big years. In 2021, Nikki Carrera-Levy and Marioso Asa set a single-season big year record in Colombia when they saw 1,453 species. There is even a big day record. One team in Ecuador spotted 431 different species of birds in a single day in 2015. While I'm not a birder, I've been fascinated by people who pursue a big year. A couple of times every year, I'll check up on people who are attempting their big year just to see how they're doing and to see if anyone is close to breaking the record. And that's because attempting a big year requires a lot of luck, a lot of patience, and a lot of perseverance. The executive producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is Charles Daniel. The associate producers are Peter Bennett and Cameron Kiefer. Today's review comes from listener Eric Sudam over on Apple Podcasts in the United States. They write, Turns my commute into an educational adventure. Gary is like my travel companion. While in reality I'm driving my kids to school in Michigan, in my imagination I'm time traveling the entire world. Thank you. I'd also be interested in episodes about ice hockey. Also, if you could, mention the best senior women's hockey team in all the world, the Ice Pack. Because Ice Pack rules, all others drool. That would be great. Thanks, Eric. An episode on ice hockey is certainly possible. And I also want to wish the Ice Pack best of luck in their upcoming season. Remember, if you leave a review or send me a boostagram, you too can have it read on the show.